Well, thank you so much for staying tuned. If you missed that last segment, Deb Bowen was my guest, B-O-W-E-N. Her books are uh, a bookbyme.com is the website, and they're just really great. Little bit, look how thin this is. That's perfect. Um, these would be great church books, actually, to put in, right next to, to your, in your bag and take to church. They're very lightweight for your, your middle-aged kids. But um, the books are well done. They're written by kids. They're illustrated by kids, and I, I'm just I'm I'm, ta I'm taken with this, and I and actually I've got a couple more ideas since I talked to Deb, so we'll have to I'll have to get in touch with her because I have a couple more ideas of things we can do, but um, great great idea. This was just past Easter week. We had Holy Week, and uh, celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ last Sunday. I hope you had time to do that with your family. And if you have issues in your family, and so many families do, I want you to think about that because we want peace around the earth, peace on earth, but we can't seem to get it across the dining room table on some of those big festivities. So before we get to Memorial Day, July 4th, uh, into the fall with Thanksgiving and then Christmas, I want you to be thinking now what you can do to be working through some of those issues with your family. And some of you can't. I get it. I totally get it. Some are just not workable. I, I understand that. Make sure that the forgiveness of your heart is not the issue, that you are forgiving uh, others. You don't, reconciliation is different than forgiveness. We have to have forgiveness. We're called to have forgiveness as Christians. Reconciliation takes two. Forgiveness takes one. So think that through and be working on that. As part of the week, I got to attend several prayer breakfasts right here in Des Moines. I'm very active with the Iowa, governor's prayer, or Iowa prayer breakfast. used to be governor's prayer breakfast. Now in its 54th year, Oz Guinness was here. Oz Guinness had a great uh, word for folks, and one of the things he said was, um, you have the right to believe anything, but that doesn't mean anything you believe is right. Great instruction, great warning for us on the religious freedom issue. Bobby Jendel spoke at the Friday breakfast in Cedar Rapids, the prayer breakfast, and I was honored to be able to attend that, be invited and to attend that. He said, the U.S. didn't create religious liberty. Religious liberty created the United States. And that is so true. America is the country she is because of our founding fathers' understanding of religious freedom and not wanting to be oppressed or forced into something by the government. But by that, they also understood and came to America, many of them, to evangelize and to express their freedom in their Christian faith. It wasn't just any faith. It was the Christian faith. And when you read through the Declaration of Independence, God is mentioned four different times, the Supreme Being, uh, the Almighty. Uh, we thank him for our blessings in the Constitution and the preamble. We thank him for our blessings in the preamble in the state of Iowa. And I think uh, at least 48 states, if not all 50 states, have God mentioned in some fashion in their preamble. Iowa does. Iowa talks about uh, our blessings uh, from the Supreme Being. And my point with this is it's not just any old religion or anybody's religion. They were quite clear, and I probably should have looked up the quote. It was one of the Websters uh, said something about, if we, if we um, continue to teach the Bible and honor God, we'll go on to prosper. But if we fail, how quickly calamity will overtake us. Uh, I think Jedediah Morris had a quote on Christianity, something about... Um, 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 I scruple not. Uh, if someone if someone were not a Christian, I scruple not that he is not an enemy of this country. I think Washington had some as well. Washington obviously said it is impossible to rightly govern without God and the Bible. So there are all kinds of precedents there for our Christian faith, not just a faith. Why am I talking about this? Because at the Iowa House, the Iowa House, today an imam was there. Imam, Muslim faith. If you understand the Muslim faith and the Quran, they have absolutely no tolerance whatsoever for anybody else's faith, unlike the Christian faith, where we say if uh, you minister to someone and they decide, uh, you know, God gave us free will, and if they choose that's not their path, you shake the dust and you move on. Whereas the Quran is not quite so nearly so gracious, and oftentimes people find themselves in harm's way. Look at the countries where you where 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 uh, Islam is the rule, Sharia law is the rule. And decide for yourself if that's a country where you'd like to, to live, especially as a female. It would be a very different case for you. So why am I bringing this up? Imam today at the State House, Wiccan tomorrow. Um, it's not that they don't have the right. We totally appreciate and we will protect that freedom of religion. The sad part is that here in America, we no longer 
we no longer teach our history, but we have been so um, neglectful in teaching it that we even refuse or oppress it to be told where people no longer now understand the true intentions of our founding fathers in that Constitution, in the First Amendment, uh, the fact that there is no separation of church and state in the Constitution, that there is in the Bible but not in the Constitution, and that someone who is elected to office, a, a, a legislative figure who is accepted or, or given the oath, accepted the oath of office to protect our state constitution and our U.S. constitution, as I said, both giving honor to God, would not understand that oath to the point where they would be okay inviting someone who worships another God, a different God, and, I'm sorry, but a false God. If you, if you believe in the Bible, it's clear. Ryan, do you have that scripture that said um, only one true God? Which one was that? We looked up several. All right. Do you have that video of the Wiccan story on KCCI? Can you play that video at that uh, uh, minute marker where we're talking, we're hearing from the Wiccan priestess? Um, did I give you the minute marker on that? Are we, are we, yep, it's coming. Because if, here's the deal. At the end of that, I don't know if I'll have time to get to the end of that. Are we ready with it? No, it's still loading. At the end of the interview, they interview a Catholic priest. And I don't think they told us which priest it was. Said he has no problem with the Wiccan giving the invocation as long as she offers the prayer to God. Um, Let's just go to Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 22. It says, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. What you offer, the Lord says he has no, no delight in your burnt offerings. He doesn't need your sacrifice. In Psalms 46, your sacrifice is not delighted nor required for, for sin, not since Jesus Christ came. In Psalms 51, 16, not, I don't delight in your sacrifice, your burnt offering. Um, what I delight in is a contrite heart, a broken spirit, obedience, following my commandments, the first commandment, no other gods before thee. There's no other God, period. And so uh, we don't have any issue with somebody uh, having the freedom to do something. I have issue with the fact that our schools have been so neglectful on our tax dollars, so neglectful to teach the accurate history of our country, that that would be a thought to be a good idea. That's the tragedy in all of this. That's the tragedy. Do we have it, the video? We don't have it? All right, so we're going to go to break. We'll have a two-minute break. When we come back, I think Barry Snell is already on the line. We'll be talking to him about the firearms, Iowa firearms, and the bill that we've watched them work through the process. I've talked to you a little bit about the bully bill. 515-281-3221 is the House number. Please call your House members. Uh, call them. Email them. It's always easy to email. First name dot last name at legis dot Iowa spelled out, dot gov, L-E-G-I-S dot Iowa dot gov, and tell them uh, we don't like a bill that removes parental authority that would give the school any reason not to tell parents when their children may be struggling or in trouble that would expand government either with the cost of appropriations that will follow or in more bureaucratic offices or in authority over family. It's just simply a bad bill. SF-345, the anti-bullying bill, needs to go. It is not helpful. Everything that it does as far as protecting children is already in the code. This just expands government and reduces parental authority local control. We're going to go to that break. We'll be right back after these messages. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people 
not places, especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. And I am Tamara Scott. You're listening to Tamara Scott Live with Truth For Our Time. If God expects you to live through it, he's directed you how to do it. And we help you live God's word in today's world with many of the things that are happening right now at our state house, in your schoolhouse, at the uh, um, um, White House, in, you, in, in D.C. And so uh, we'll hopefully be talking next week a little bit more about the Indiana law. But remember, if the Indiana law was changed and you no longer can um, stand on your religious liberties or your your deeply held convictions as to what you will or will not do as far as um, um, providing some services, then that law means nothing at all, to be honest with you. It's, it's gutted and possibly put us in a worse shape. So we'll talk about that next week, perhaps. We talked earlier about the Holocaust. Understand the danger of that and what we're seeing now with this ridiculing and persecution, frankly, of Christians. It's not persecution in a physical fa- fa- faction, but it is really mistreating people and, and denying them uh, the opportunity to believe. Uh, let me just say it this way. If it does no good to say that your country has the freedom to believe if the government doesn't believe you have that freedom. And so this is, I think, where we're at right now in a very dangerous spot. One of the other, first that's the First Amendment. The Second Amendment is the other one we hear often. We hear a lot about that. And joining me now is Barry Snell with the Iowa Firearms. Barry, the... Barry Snell, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Uh, good morning, and thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I appreciate you calling in. You are with Iowa Firearms. What is your position there? Uh, I am the president of the Iowa Firearms Coalition. This is a pretty good group. I see you have you know various people lobbying there, Rich Rogers and um, a couple others there. It, well, you had a couple young ladies there earlier this year who really, I think, were, were phenomenal and did a great, great job of getting some of these bills moved forward, but... Uh, we followed the one bill. It went through. We finally got it through the Senate. Some things happened to it. Take us through that process. Sure. Uh, I can start from the beginning. It's kind of had a very interesting journey. Um, the House and Senate leadership uh, got together with us and got together with the NRA, got together with uh, some of the law enforcement agencies uh, and organizations in the state of Iowa. And we're talking about the Iowa State Sheriffs and Deputies Association, the Iowa Chiefs Association, you know, so the very uh, substantial and, and influential groups. And we sat down and, and we talked about what we wanted to pass um, firearms-wise in this session. And what we hashed out was a bill. Uh, uh, the famous one that we're talking about right now is Senate Files 425, uh, the omnibus bill. And there was a, uh, a companion bill in the House. Uh, it passed the House very quickly, very easily. Uh, and then it was had its own process over in the Senate as well. What the Senate had done uh, towards the beginning of the session was that the Senate Judiciary Committee um, passed the S, what would become SS 425, but they also created a a suppressors only bill, and that is to say that it only had the provision for legalizing suppressors, and it did not have any of the provisions that was in SS 425, and. <laughs> Why they did that is, uh, of course, a topic for debate, perhaps. Uh, however, they ended up tabling SS-425, and that was the bill that both the House and the Senate had previously and originally agreed upon, and they ended up uh, moving SS-427, which is suppressors only, to the floor of the Senate, and they voted for it there. Why did they do that? Well, we we think that it was... Uh, 
Well, I, I guess to, to answer that would be speculation. There's there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, I would say that there uh, there was enough opposition on certain provisions of the omnibus bill that it may have seemed easier, perhaps, to just pass SS 427 and to make progress. I believe that was the mindset of uh, uh, some of the legislators in the Senate that they wanted to make progress rather than you know fighting smaller battles and not make progress on anything at all that year. So they sent 427 back to the House. I actually have a great update. Uh, just a few minutes ago, literally right <laughs> before I called in, uh, the House amended uh, SF-427 to include some of the original provisions that were in SF-425 back onto the bill. So that just passed. Uh, like 10 minutes ago. So, so uh, we're given a scoop. Is that what you're saying? Once again, we have the scoop on this show. Pardon me? Once again, we have the scoop, the first scoop on this show. Yes, yes, we do. We absolutely <laughs> the do. exclusive right here on Tamara Scott Live. Um, yes, ma'am. So, it, it passed 7325 and it's headed back to the House with the uh, other provisions that were left out of it in the original vote. So are, those the pro- are those the provisions that will protect those folks who have gun permits from being, their names or addresses being publicized? Is that in yes, there now? Ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So it, it, it still has suppressors. Uh, the uh, parental, uh, the age limit for parents being able to teach their children uh, firearm safety with handguns is still... Um, parental discretion. It cut back to zero, right? It, it originally was 14 years old, and, and the, uh, the bill that just passed has removed that, um, assuming it passes the Senate, of course. Uh, the permit to acquire, um, we were originally trying to get rid of that since it's a uh, redundant, out-of-date thing now that we have the FBI NICS check, uh, but we've moved it out to five years instead of it being an annual permit. The privacy of records, that's the, the big one that you're just talking about. Uh, that has been added back in with a few, few uh, changes. We had a whole lot of resistance from um, particular segments of the legislature on complete uh, banning of people being able to get the record. So what we've done is now if somebody wants to know if I, for example, have a concealed handgun permit, they have to fill out a form. They have to put their name, their address, all their biographical information on there. Uh, they have to specify a a good reason why they need to know whether or not I have a permit. So that's your so compromise. What's that? That's a compromise, and I and yes, I get ma'am. it. But it really irritates me that somebody can go find out things, belongings, possessions that are valuable that I may have in my home. I agree. Yes, and as a, an organization, it is absolutely our position that uh, the privacy should be sacrosanct. Uh, there should not be uh, any ability for anybody to come in and find out whether or not you have a permit, and therefore, you know, just by logical reasoning, probably own a firearm. So we're against that. However, it was an important enough issue that we needed to try and get that in there. We we couldn't let that hang anymore because right. just right. as soon as we started talking about this here at the beginning of the session, uh, newspapers and TV stations have called into um, sheriff's departments all over the state requesting the information right now before they lose it. Really? Uh, they're, they're, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've talked to several sheriffs who've told me that, and uh, they're they're basically stalling. <laughs> you know, I, uh, they're trying to hold the line and wait for this law to pass. Um, fortunately, FOIA requests tend to be flawed, and uh, they can reject or, or delay the request based on some of the uh, flaws in the application. So, so let me clarify. Newspapers, did you say radios or, or just... Press. Who is it that's wanting this information? Various newspapers and TV stations across the state. And they just want it on the statewide record base or specific? What they're trying to do is they're, they're trying to gather the list of permit holders in the state right now before the law goes into effect and removes their ability to find out. That's incredible to me. It's irritating to me right now, and this is a little side note, sorry, but prerogative of the host, I guess. Right. But it irritates me when I hear a news story and they'd put a restaurant warrant out for someone and then they'll say, and they had uh, you know, this firearm in their possession or they had, uh, we found you know, shotguns in the house. Like, that's a bad thing. 
like someone's automatically, uh, uh, you know, we we suspicious because they own firearms. It right. irritates me the way they're throwing that in the news stories. And people, you need to be calling your news stations and tell them, I'm on to you, and I don't appreciate it. I see your bias, and I'll take note of it. Absolutely. So what do you need people to do at the State House right now? Do okay, need- so it's back over to the Senate, and all eyes are on the Senate. It's going to be up to uh, Senate Majority Leader Mike Gronstall. Uh, <laughs> He's going to have to schedule the bill to uh, be debated and voted on on the floor of the Senate. So as far as viewers and and listeners go, what we need them to do is call the Senate switchboard and leave a message for Senator Gronstall to schedule it and get it out there so we can vote on it. Uh, Call the legislators, uh, their own legislators, the chairs of the Judiciary Committee, uh, which would be um, Steve Sauters. Uh, call those guys, leave messages for them, tell them to bring it to a vote, send them emails, tell them to bring it to a vote. And, of course, I would, in doing that, I would reiterate that always be kind and respectful. Um, these aren't necessarily bad people, even though we may disagree with them. Uh, they've all been very helpful, even in their uh, opposition. So you know, just be respectful. They are our representatives, and uh, you know, comport yourself with dignity. Okay, <laughs> very, very good word. Be bright, be brief, and be gone. And so, right. Barry, do you on your firearms, give me the website for Iowa Firearms. Yeah, it's uh, www.iowafc.org. For Firearms Coalition, FC, yes, C is in coalition, Iowa spelled out, iowafc.org. And do you have talking points or information on this bill where they can find it quickly? Something they could just email to their legislators. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, have email alerts. If they go to the website, they can sign up for those, and uh, we're crafting one as I speak. Uh, the Our Facebook page, if you just look up Iowa Firearms Coalition on Facebook, that actually typically beats our, our email, so that might be the fastest way to keep up to date. So Iowa Fire, Firearms Coalition on, on Facebook, great way to get to Are you on Twitter as well? Uh, we do have Twitter, uh, but Facebook is our, our fastest and, and uh, most up-to-date social media source. And the best way to, to call the switchboard is 515-281-3711, I believe, for the Senate. 515-281-3711. And Barry is right. Certainly call the grand, the, the grand stall. Um, he, we talked about him grand stalling the bill. The bill's been grand stalled. It's now a, a verb. Um, so, so certainly call him. But absolutely call the other 25 Democratic senators. Call your Republican senators and tell them, don't. Don't let them off the hook. Don't let one guy take the the blame, be the scapegoat, because 25 others have a vote, and they have power as well, and they better extend it. They better pursue it on the behalf of their constituents. Do you have any idea, the Iowa people, are they behind you on this? Uh, in the Senate, you mean? The, 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 do you have a poll in Iowa that tells you, are, are voters in Iowa behind you on this bill? Oh, we, we don't have a direct poll, but we do have some indirect information, uh, the hits for the legislative website, watching the streaming video and audio, uh, they spike. I mean, they go from, you know, just a handful of people watching to thousands of people watching when this bill is being debated, when it's being discussed. Uh, If you just want to do a a straw poll of the members of the Senate, we pretty much have all of the Republicans who have verbally agreed to vote for the bill, and we have at least 15 Democrats who have told us verbally Face to face, that they are in favor of the bill, and there's a, there's going to be a handful of others that are in favor of it too, but they just don't want to uh, you know come out and, and say right. so. So Barry, we have a, a, a very bipartisan majority. Barry Snell has been my guest. He's with the Iowa Fire, Firearms Coalition, IowaFC.org, or you can go to the Facebook page, call your senators on that bill, tell them to get the bill up for a vote, and then to vote yes is how you want them to vote. Correct, Barry? That is correct. And it's SF four two seven. Correct. Well, that's it for us. We are out of time. I'm so appreciative, Barry, of you coming on, and my thanks to Rich Rogers and the other gang there. What's the other lobbyist that joins Rich there at the State House? Uh, I'll be John Reed and myself. That's That's who it is, John Reed. Very good. Well, thank you all so much for the work you do on behalf of our privacy rights, our ownership rights, our Second Amendment rights, because without those, it's hard to enforce any of the other ones as well. We are out of time. I am Tamara Scott. You've been given great information today. It's up to you what you do with it. Be encouraged but never be complacent.